Right, hallelujah, we have made it to the entrance of Buedma National Park. Check it out. Parque Nacional. Park Nacional. And these two lads are here in charge. Uh, they don't speak any French, so unfortunately we're trying to communicate in very broken Arabic. Uh, it seems like I need documentation to get in. Uh, that's as much as we've established. So they're on the phone to someone somewhere to find out. I don't know. I really don't know where I was supposed to get a permit from, but it turns out it is not at this entrance. And this is the only entrance, so... Let's see if I can somehow talk my way in. Good morning, everybody. We have left Gafsa. We are just outside El Gatar, so we're heading, so we're heading east, and we are going to Bu Hedma National Park and check out the views that we have on our drive. So the national park that we're heading to is quite unique for North Africa and definitely unique for Tunisia. It's kind of, it's like a bit of savanna left over. So it's the only place in the country which has acacia trees and that means you get a load of pretty unique wildlife there. So from the photos I've seen it looks a bit like South Africa. We have found a decent road that heads into Buedna, uh, westwards. So have a look. Landscapes already changed quite a lot. So we're now going to be traveling with the mountains to our right hand side. So we are driving west. So they're just to our north. And I think it's about, well, the, the road signs are saying it's less than 20k to Buedna, the actual place, but the entrance to the park, or at least the turning that I want to take to get up to the Eco Museum, which I think is a dirt track, is about 23 kilometers away. So let's, or is it? 21 kilometers away. Right, so let's hope that the road stays like this because this is pretty good. Let's also hope that we're able to buy or obtain a permit at the park entrance. Uh, it'll be really annoying if we get sent back to Mazuna or somewhere else, uh, have to backtrack. I did actually go into Mazona and find the Direction des Forêts, which is part of the Ministry of Agriculture, I think. So uh, I read in the rough guide that apparently they have something to do with the park, so perhaps they're in charge of permits. Uh, but my general experience is um, the act of asking if a permit is required tends to generate the need for a permit in these kind of circumstances. So I think I'd rather just head down there uh, and see what people say actually at the park. Um, so better to ask for forgiveness than permission in this particular instance. So fingers crossed, they'll let us in. Right, hallelujah, we have made it to the entrance of Buedma National Park. Check it out. Turns out you needed an authorization in Tunis, but we've managed to get in anyway, and now we're driving through. Welcome to Buhedma National Park. Look at this. So it looks like getting out. It looks like getting out the vehicles was a step too far. They seem to be about to run off now. Now driven up to the park observatory. Uh, it's going to be quite windy up there, so I'll try and do the speaking now. But yeah, I'm getting a tour from the park director. This is awesome. Look at the view we have.
So they don't have the keys, so they can't show me, but there's room for five people to sleep in here, which again, can be organized free of charge via the Ministry of Agriculture in Tunis. Uh, they've got toilets, they've got electricity running off the photo photovoltaic cells. I mean, and the views, what a great place to sleep. Or if you don't fancy that, you can always just camp. You can camp anywhere, basically. So I think this is a popular spot for scientists to base themselves at. There's our first ostrich. So ostriches did actually live here right up until the 20th century, I'm assuming. Right, we've abandoned the vehicle, and now we're walking to go and see something impressive, apparently. If you look at the rocks here, this is not good for the tires. <laughs> very, very rocky. Apparently also very popular with cobras, so be careful if you're camping. Right, well, we found an ost ostrich nest. There it is. This is where the eggs were, but unfortunately, if we look at the footprints, a jackal. Jackal, okay. So jackal has rather unfortunately smashed the eggs on the rocks and eaten them. So we've lost this particular nest. It's thick, it's like a it's like a piece of China. Then we've got more eggs around this corner. All smashed up. Looks like these jackals had a feast. Gazelle toilet. Lovely. Right, we've driven along another terrible road and we're at a viewing point for a river. Um, see the car down there. We've actually come up a set of stairs that they've created out of this kind of rocky stuff. So it's, it's pretty obvious where you're supposed to go. Um, and I'm guessing the view is somewhere over there. You can see the water flowing through and then it's all green in this valley, which stands out quite a lot as you're driving. And here is the view that you are rewarded with. You can actually hear the electricity pylons <laughs> buzzing. There's the water. And then there's where we came from and there's the river flowing off. That's the best camping spot down there. You have to walk across the river. And if you follow those pylons along, again, you have to walk, there's a waterfall down there. So this is an excellent habitat for eagles. Great if you're a bird watcher, you come down here, camp, check them out while they're hunting in this area. So we have a marked walking trail that starts at the entrance. So that's quite cool. And the, the overall theme is to listen. So here we've got running water. I guess this would have the uh, the map, the entire map, showing all of the uh, different routes you can drive and walk. And here's our park emblem. So this small stream is very popular with cobras. I don't see any here at the moment, but... And there's the dried out main riverbed. All right, let's head into the Eco Musee. Right, we're in the Eco Museum. Let's have a quick wander around. So look at this, like, this is amazing to find this out in the middle of the park. You've got French and Arabic language displays for everything. And it's big, really big. 
stretches all the way over here. And we come over to the amazing donkeys. We find out about the different crafts and artisanal traditions in the area. And follow the donkeys around. And then we have a timeline of the area to finish, starting a good 200,000 years ago. So the area around Gafsa is actually the area with the earliest evidence of human habitation in Tunisia, I think. Look at these guys. Oh, and they've got babies. How cute. Oh, no, it's a bit too close. Oh dear. Look at that guy. How old this building is. 1892. This cat's really ruining my filming with its loud meowing. So this is the original accommodation for the people who were setting up the park, presumably from the 1980s. German made. <laughs> Have a look. bunk beds that they actually slept in while they were setting the park up. That's, that is dedication. <laughs> so presumably that was driven here. And the cat is still following us. We're now going to open up the bungalows and have a look inside. So these are at the main center next to the Eco Museum. Uh, thus far, these have only ever been used by researchers who come to the park. But if you get the authorization from the Ministry of Agriculture, then you are also allowed to sleep here if you don't fancy camping. So let's wander in and have a look at what they're like. Cuisine. Oh wow, well, got a kitchen. Uh, we got bedrooms. Toilet and shower. Another room. Where does this lead? Oh, this leads through into the ensuite. Lovely. So yeah, you could comfortably sleep. Oh, and some more people in here. So you could sleep six people in here. And you've got a kitchen set up with gas. Uh, yeah. Presumably this runs off the solar panels outside. So I've just finished my full park tour with the park director, uh, Monsieur Ben Ali Abdelatif. And as a parting gift, he's given me an ostrich egg. <laughs> So I'm going to have to drive quite carefully on this road on the way back to make sure that we don't break it. Yeah, what an amazing park. People, you have to come and visit this park when it reopens after coronavirus.